We are. We gotta stop saying we're back. We're just here. <laughs> Live and in back. studio. We are <laughs> back. <laughs> Live in the studio. <laughs> Join us. Uh, and if you are unfamiliar, this is This Week in Barbecue, the Barbecue Focus Podcast. That's coming at you hotter and faster than, well, those 4,000 recall Tesla Cybertrucks. Yeah. <laughs> that's gotta suck. That's that's not great. Because when you're paying six figures for a vehicle, nothing really will get to you like, you know, super gluing your acceleration pad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't seen one up close, but someone around the office, mm-hmm. this area has it because I've seen it numerous times. Just wandering around. Yeah. yeah just going. Then I, and, I, and it's like, it's got these. It's been outfitted, and I'm just and I'm just thinking to myself when I saw those, that news. Is like, I wonder if he realized he just spent all that money and just got to just send it right back. Yeah, like, what are you maybe do? maybe he got lucky. Maybe he doesn't have to send it back. I think they want all of them back. Oh, really? Yeah, it's it's not like so. It's not like a production number. run. No, or they something. all mm-hmm. what was it? Three thousand nine hundred and twenty-eight. Ouch. That are out in the wild have to come back because Ouch. it's it's the clear. And I was like, no, you can your shit back. Because that accelerator pedal just, one, it comes off, which, okay, things happen, you know, super glue, adhesives, mm-hmm. glue in a car, whatever, do your thing, get it to stay. But if that thing slides off because of that weird design on there, apparently it will never come back up. And <laughs> <laughs> Let's just hope you've got a straight shot till the battery runs out. <laughs> exactly. And if you've ever driven in a Tesla, you realize once that pedal's down, it's going. Oh, yeah, it's moving. It's like, oh, okay. All right. There's, yeah. there's no... It's just stop gone. <laughs> that's that. That's all it is. But this isn't a car and auto or a CarMax <laughs> podcast. We're all about barbecue here. So uh, I'm your host, Rashid Phillips, and joining me as always is the amazingly bearded Mr. Lee Harmon. Let's talk some barbecue. Let's do it. All right. So question for you. Hit me. What do you think if I told you, hey, I'm going to copyright ketchup? Or more familiar or relatable to me, hey, I'm going to copyright jerk sauce. I feel like that's too generic. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's wild, right? Like, uh, I don't know. But that's Did Heinz like, do it? No. Well, you would think, right? Those aren't trademarked, but it's sort of like where the brand name has replaced what the product oh, is. Yeah, like Q-tip. Exactly. Yeah. Or Band-Aid. Yeah. It doesn't actually... The thing, it's a bandage, yeah. but the brand is Band-Aid. Chapstick is lip balm, but it's yep. chapstick. A million and one things, right? Yeah. David Chang of Momofuku is apparently sending out cease and desist letters the way Oprah used to toss out cars at the end of the show <laughs> um, because he is the trademark and copyright owner of Chili Crunch. First iteration, spelt, you know, finished with a L-E. Mm-hmm. He's now filing for the L-I. And he bought the L-E from a guy who had filed the trademark decades ago, but he never influenced it, uh, uh, enforced it. He just wanted it. Yeah. Well, that's not what Chang's doing. Chang is, is literally shooting out. Well, Chang's team, the entity, <laughs> is shooting out these uh, cease and desist letters. Dang. And that... Well, I, I wouldn't even just say just the Asian community. The whole community, culinary community as a whole is like, yo, what are you bro, doing? What are you doing? Yeah. Like, like, why? You suck. Stop it. Yeah. And if you're a small mom and pop shop, that's kind of scary because you're barely making yeah. margins on it. Right. But then you're getting this giant conglomerate coming down on you like, hey, stop it or else. Yeah. Type of thing. So, uh, and I believe the OG version of it is Lao Gan Ma. Excuse my pronunciation if I got it wrong. At least I'm trying. But, yeah, he's out there telling people, stop using that title. You don't own it. And I get it. When you own it, when you have your name, you got to protect it. But you're you're trying to copyright and trademark something that has been out before you were born. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like when you're, like, owner number two and you're just going like to come in and change how things have been going, yeah. it's like, dude, what are you doing? Exactly, like you, you're your owner too. Yeah. Like you're, you, it was here before you. You're yeah. just now trying to to brand. It's it's really like if Texas were like, hey, we own the copyright for salt and pepper. <laughs> <laughs> so if you you can't say it again, you got to do salt underscore pepper. You know, but yeah. that's but that's where he's getting. Like I said, he owns L E. Now he's going for L I. It, it's it's the weird thing, sort of like um, 
when LeBron wanted to do the same for Taco Tuesday mm-hmm. type of thing. You know, it's it's weird how that world works, but there's money in this. He's oh, yeah. saying his argument is that it's diluting the value of his brand and, and this and that. I'm like, you didn't invent this. Yeah. You didn't come up with this. It's really like if I were trying to trademark jerk sauce. Yeah. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't work. It's or, I mean, just, or even just take a step further, like just barbecue sauce. Yeah, it's it's a condiment. Yeah, copyrighting condiments. What are, what are you doing? I, I, and in my mind, it's this is one of those instances where I get it on both sides, and I understand it as a business owner and this and that. Sure. But it wasn't something you created in any way, and you're trying to protect. And it's not something you've um, elevated to like this new thing to where it's revolutionized the whole <laughs> industry. Yeah. It's a condiment. Yeah. Like, bro, calm down. <laughs> Something you've been using. Yeah. And now you just happen to have picked up the name. Yep. And now you want to just go after everyone who's been doing the same thing you were doing. Yes. That's basically it. That that That's really it. And, and I think what what baffles me is, like, if this goes, it sets a really tricky precedence oh, yeah. Yeah. going forward. Like, what else can spawn off of this now Mm -hmm. that's going to happen? Because everyone, I don't know if everyone does, but um, the whole issue with where did Sierra Mist go Mm -hmm. versus Starry, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, it's like just vanished overnight. But that happened because Sierra Mist tried to sue an adult entertainer whose name is actually Sierra Mist saying that she was diluting the brand. (laughs) And you're throwing, infringing on yeah, our brand, <laughs> basically, and sending her copyright, you know, uh, excuse me, cease, cease and desist, and desist, yeah, and bullying her with all this money. And turned out, while they were doing all this, they'd let it lapse, and her attorney pointed it out, so she bought it. Oh yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so checkmate. The, they're basically <laughs> when you when you've messed up, what is it? Uh, when you fuck around to find out, yeah, so badly that you end up having to kill off one brand. And start a whole new brand. And I'm not going to lie. It's like, no, no, guys, it was just time to rebrand. Yeah. <laughs> I had a, I had a, uh, a contract with Sierra Mist. Yeah. We did a whole ad out with them in L.A. and everything. Yep. That ran. And then we were going to renew. And then they were like, oh, we just have to take a pause. I was like, whatever happened? That's when I went down and found out. Like, oh, fuck around and found out. Yep. Can't, ended that deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be mad about that no, one. Ending. No, I was, I was like, I, I get it. I, I completely uh, understand. But such is life. Whatever, do your thing. Um, <laughs> there's some winners I want to shout out. You know, uh, shout out to Miss Sylvie. She's always on the I'm circuit. About to say, always doing something. Always just lapping them. I keep telling people, don't let that sweet smile fool mm-hmm. you. She's she's mean on the sticks, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she placed third in brisket at the uh, Barbecue Boots and Brews 2024 contest in Paris. California, so nice. you know she's out there living a good life. I think she's got that avocado f- ranch farm on her land too. It's like, yo, Sylvie, let me just get a box of them. Yeah, can you send some my way? I know, right? Just pick them by the time they get here; they're ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, congrats to her. Shout out to our buddy Boog, uh, the real slow mo Q. He came in first in pork, brisket, and second in ribs. And uh, this was all happening up in the Pacific Northwest at the Fair Barbecue Playoffs. And guess who was his helping hand? I'm, I mean, you saying that, I'm going to say it's Evan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our, 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 our young friend here is still Heck out yeah. there uh, in between his Chick-fil-A shifts, yeah. uh, putting in work. So love to see it. Love to see it. Yeah, shout out to him. He's like, I know he's not being like low-key sneaky about it but like if he keeps doing what he's doing there's yeah. no way he's not oh like, yeah i'm definitely filling out an application oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's be 21 just running everything just going to town kid's got a good head on his shoulders good support system he's gonna go far yeah love that yeah um now <laughs> the last time i said this i ended up creating stuff for their brand and their business and all of this but we'll see where this goes uh more celebrities are getting into the barbecue game. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> they, they're, I'm telling you, there must be more more money in here than uh, than the industry wants to lead on. But uh, Channing Crowder, uh, former NFL player, okay. more probably more recognizable and more familiar uh, with his Emmy Award winning podcast, 
the pivot mm-hmm. is in the spice game with Crowder Powder. <laughs> it is a meat and veggies rub. Okay. That he's put now there. He's out there uh, supporting, uh, promoting it. You can get it right now online. And <laughs> like he didn't have enough to do as a uh, entertainer. He now does rubs. They've got that podcast, and he is also doing stand up comedy. He reminds me of Shaq. Like <laughs> Shaq retired, I was like, I don't know what to do, so I'm gonna just do everything. It's gonna give it all a shot. He got his doctorate, became you know as a sheriff, mm-hmm. always hopping around with Walmart, just buying people's carts up. He's DJing. He's got a podcast. That was actually I think my favorite version of Shaq was when was he DJ started Shaq. just. Yeah, because he was popping up at everything, Everywhere. every big festival. And like at first I was like, okay, like somebody let him on stage. And then it kept happening and kept happening. Yeah. And then like some of his sets got released. I'm like, mm-hmm. I mean, he's not bad. It's not. He <laughs> and you in. know he's having a fun time. And you know that like when a crowd sees Shaq come out, they're, they're going, going wild. They're going, going wild. Because yeah. when you're, you're a monolith, you're yeah. a literal <laughs> giant. Like there's no way you're not standing out. Yeah. And you just have that amazing personality mm-hmm. to go along with it. People are excited. So I, I would say Shaq would get in a barbecue game, but I think he's already there with burgers. He's got that burger company. He's in with the general. Uh, can we just get Shaq his own cereal? Like <laughs> 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 O'Neillios or something? I don't I don't know. Just just run that back. But uh, yeah, uh, Shannon Crowder in the space. Check it out. It looks like a pretty good mixture and rub. He's... Doing everything you need to do when you're supporting these things. You're doing pop-ups. you got the mm-hmm. imagery. It's going all about it. But uh, why not? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> and uh, speaking of condiments and rubs and sauces, Uncle Pat Neely. Patrick. <laughs> 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 That'll never not get old. Yeah. That, that moment. <laughs> we all turned to kids that day. Uh, <laughs> 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 Uncle Pat, he's just releasing his barbecue sauce that he's had and been using for 30 years. He's finally making it public, and it's being released online, eBay, Amazon, Walmart, his site. So go get some of that, support some flavors it is. And all the included ingredients on the bottle just happen to be blacked out. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's, 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 it's nothing specific. A little bit of this, a little bit more of that. Yeah. Half of that amount, you know, <laughs> but it's... Uh, it's a good, it looks like it's going to be a good rub, so go go support, go check it out. And, uh, yeah, let's continue on. A little bit more, a little fill-in pressing news. Real quick while we're on the topic of rubs. Yeah, when, yeah. Uh, oh, you sound oh, like Oh, yeah, I know. Else. Yeah, you know I had to. You sound like everyone else. I mean, is it just ever going to come back? <laughs> it is. It is. It's, uh, I'm actually, it's, it's, on my, it's on my finalization list. Okay. <laughs> All right. It will be back. Because um, I do want to do some giveaways, probably give away the pork at Memphis and May, so mm-hmm. we'll we'll get to that in a sec. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, just, just, just had to. Got to keep you on your toes. Just, just, just damn. <laughs> just damn. <laughs> um, let's go with... Uh, Shout out Williams if I'm yeah, going to get yeah, stabbed. Yeah, if I'm yeah, going to get stabbed, it's going to be a while. Like it, Williams it, it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, definitely shout out Williams. I love... Uh, this is the... So I gave you one of the knives, so mm-hmm. this is the other version of it. Ooh, the blacked out blade. I yeah. like that. A little smaller, not a flick out. Yeah, but a it's got a little lock release. on there too. Yeah, yeah, nice. Great little small EDC, but just shout out to Williams knives, man. They make such amazing stuff. Like not a sponsored thing. What, what do the beauticians things do? They do this and with the hand. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I just I just love it. I go between this and the one that I gave you. Yeah, great EDC. Yeah. Um, but. There's something that I can't fit in my pocket, and that's the new press from Eminem. It's a behemoth of a press. Oh, is Works that the one great. they were uh, testing out a little while ago? Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's solid. I made some steaks with it. I made some burgers with it. Oddly enough, we have a campaign coming out with burgers, but I didn't get it on until after, so I still mm-hmm. went out and made some more burgers with it. Why not? I love it because it, it, it fits my mitts, man. I was like, <laughs> yes. And you don't have to hard press. Like, no, the no, weight is just essential. the weight of it. Boom. Walk off walk off and i like it because some of the other presses i have um made in sent a great one which i love Mm -hmm. um but i like my patties a little bit bigger so i use that for sometimes steak but it's not as heavy Mm -hmm. uh fine access sent one but it has all these grooves in it and i was like i don't really want us to do that for burgers no um this was just solid how heavy is the m&m one i don't know 
heavy enough to lean a, the, I just dropped a reel with a steak that I use it on. It's heavy enough to get that bad boy nice and flat. Nice. And press and yeah. walk away. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's good stuff. We'll, okay. we'll drop that out there. Um, meter founder, not that meter, but meat eater, Stephen, uh, Stephen Ranella has a new book coming out called the meat eater outdoor cookbook. Okay. So that's available for pre-order. Snag that. A little bit of a shameless plug. We'll see if you can still qualify, but we've got a good ranchers giveaway. So uh, this little lead in, if you've ever wanted my meat at your doorstep, (laughs) 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 Uh, I'm a 12 year old. It it had to happen. (laughs) It had to. It had to happen. I mean, they they knew who it was. They knew this cast and everything, how we, how I am before we got, you know, together. So (laughs) don't be surprised running back. So if you've ever wanted my meat at your door or wanted to get my package, now you can. (laughs) I have so many jokes written. (laughs) Uh, Need a mouthful of sheed? Got you covered. Yeah. (laughs) Eat my beef. Eat my beef. (laughs) No teeth to eat this meat. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Oh, there, I don't know how Aaron's going to hear this and just be like, oh, my God, I love it. <laughs> I don't know if they'll be allowed to reshare it, though. <laughs> but uh, in all honesty, like, things are getting expensive. Yeah. And you're going to be spending money. You're going to be spending time. Why not save on both and just sign up with them? So I actually handcrafted my own box with different meats, some of my favorite things in there, and we're giving it away along with um, Gentleman Smoker apron, some rubs, and some additional merchant stuff, along with additional recipes that you can make cool. using their stuff. So if you've ever wanted to taste my meat, now's your chance. Go on over, enter the comp. It's simple. Tag some buddies that you're going to share the food with. <laughs> it's, it's that simple. Follow myself and Good Ranchers. Tag your buddies. There you go. You don't – every um, – you can enter more than once, okay. and I believe competition should be over on the 25th, so just in time, you can still enter. Like yeah. There'll still be a little window. Get those fingers going. Go. You all aren't there anyway. Plug in some people. Yeah. You got buddies? Go. 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 And tell them to do the same. Yeah. Better your chances. Why not, right? It doesn't cost you anything. Yeah. No, I want more food. If you're not willing to do this, I don't know what to tell you. It takes 10 seconds. But uh, had to put that out there. In the various ways. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, this is our new segment, new little part that is just getting at me. Our, my hot takes, if you would. Has tipping culture gotten out of control? Um, yes. <laughs> well, that's the end of that segment. Yep, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we can move on now. There it is. We're in a full agreement. The reason why I ask is, I told you about this the other day. I'm booking the car oh, rental yeah. stuff for LA. Yep. I'm on, I'm, I didn't call anyone. No one's called me. It's no plugging away on a me. website. I'm just on a site. Yep. No chat or anything. I go, I do it. I'm about to um, check out, click check out. Another preload screen pops up saying, hey, would you like to leave a tip? <laughs> and it has a suggested amount. And I'm like, I don't, I don't. I don't know. What do you mean? What am I? I was so confused. It's like, leave a tip for what? Well, like, you I know, that, that server rack in the back room <laughs> could really use a few extra bucks on the commute to work. I actually backed out. I closed the window and went back because it's like, did I just get like a weird pop up ad or something? Yeah. Went through and it popped up again. Would you like to leave a tip? And it had a suggested value amount. And then I guess was they like realized. 18%? Yeah. Of a car rental, mind you. <laughs> and what got me was there's a little um, section on it that says, why why tip? Well, and I'm like, I'd, I'd love to know why you guys <laughs> a tip. So I click it, and it comes up saying, um, would you like to tip for the savings that you, for the money we saved you during this car rental? Excuse me? So you want me to leave you a tip on the money you saved, so wouldn't I just be giving you back the money yeah <laughs> yeah I, i'm like trying to make that make sense i and wish i was joking i will post the screenshot to our stories 
because I had to. I was like, no one's going to believe this. I've because I've never seen it. I've seen it at at Starbucks, Five Guys, all these places, but I've never gone to a website yeah. online that wasn't like uh, you know you're ordering takeout or something. But for for car rental, or it's like asking me if I want to tip for the Airbnb. Yeah. What am, what am I tipping you for? Yeah. I don't. Oh man, I'll set the place on fire if Airbnb asks for a tip. Oh Cleaning fees, service charges. They already do. Well, oh my uh, goodness. Where were we out in the mountains when we did? We were shooting. Um, oh up, yeah, up in uh, Blue Ridge. Yeah, yeah, and. Just the cleaning fees. I was like, I don't know who their cleaner is, but she's getting broke off. <laughs> and remember, they kept every, like, 10 feet, there was a folder like, hey, mm-hmm. you want to leave more money? It's like, why am I leaving more money? I just gave you 700 bucks for cleaning. Yeah. And I'm paying 700 in cleaning fees, but I still have to strip the bed? Yeah. What am I paying for? Yeah. No, that's the one that literally gets me is... What am I doing? If, if I'm I- paying a cleaning fee... Why am I doing work to make their job I'm easier? I'm really dancing on the walls for, yeah. <laughs> for if I'm pay, playing a, a cleaning fee. Like, I, for that amount, I need to be able to get out of the bed and just leave. Mm-hmm. Don't ask me to reset the th- temperature or thermostat to this or, and load the washer with this and start the... No. I'm walking out. Yeah, I'm like, that's, that's <laughs> it. That's it. But that tip came up, right? And I get it. Minimum wage is being increased to 20 bucks in some parts of the country right now. Yep. But that just threw me. So my question to you is, when should you tip and when shouldn't you? I mean, to me, it's it's whenever they're you're interacting with people. When it's like a, a cer- like the service industry, mm-hmm. if like then that's just not just food. But like for instance, like a valet, he's doing his job, he's yeah. doing his thing. If it's a good service, I'll tip. Right. You know, but um, I'm not tipping a computer. No, can't do that because th- well, I didn't why? interact with anyone. Why? Right. Like. No one did this. So, like, the guy who wrote the bit of code is just going to get tips perpetually. Maybe, maybe actually, maybe that's what happened is the web developer was like, you know what? I'm going to skim a few extra bucks. Let me I, just put this tip window in and see how long it lasts. Well, he they didn't say that. They were just like, well, we saved you money. Don't you want to <laughs> don't you want to tip us for saving you money? No, no, I really, I really don't. Um, I would just like your price to be your price and I'll decide if I want to pay that price and then we'll move on and do business. Thank you. Thank you. I believe you should tip hands down. A definite form for tipping is if someone else is refilling your drink, yeah. you should be tipping. Right. Uh, Actually, pop- yeah, I feel like that is a great baseline. Yeah. At, 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 that's just one of those top three. If someone else is refilling your, your drink. You should be tipping. If you're going to pop-ups, at least for me, doing pop-ups, I would always run back, check, make sure everything's good. Mm-hmm. You're enjoying this. If I felt like you, you devout, yeah, you a little more tip. Fine. But if I'm going through Starbucks and I ask for a black coffee and you spin it around and they're getting, it used to be 10, 15, 18. Now it's 18, 20, 25. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you guys are just... Just going for oh, it. Oh, they're pushing it. They're just, just they're just pushing. The the baseline soon is going to start at twenty. Yeah, it's going to start at twenty, or certain places just put it in, and they won't even tell you. Yeah. And then you just put on top. And I get the whole well, if you can't afford to tip, you shouldn't go out. It's like no, if you can't afford to provide a service worth tipping for, don't ask me for a tip. Yeah, it's it's just that that simple. I mean, I honestly, two things that we would be in a way better place if everyone or businesses in general just worked it into their fee yeah so it's like if i show up it's just that's what it is nobody has to worry about it Mm -hmm. the you know the servers and people don't have to worry about anything i don't have to worry about anything like Mm -hmm. let's you know and then at that point too as an employer you can be like hey you're not doing a great job yeah you're out yeah like there's no questions about it because we already built in for you to be taken care of you're being taken care of and you still suck move on (laughs) There is a brewery that myself and a fair amount of others no longer um, deal with Mm -hmm. because, one, they just have shitty practices. But one of the worst practices they had, they were, instead of um, tipping their barbacks and bartenders and everyone, Mm -hmm. they were using their tip money to pay for the bar manager. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. The people weren't getting their tips. They that the tip money was used to cover the bar manager's pay. 
Uh, yeah. So many things wrong with that. So many things. Eventually, it came out. It was this huge ordeal. Some even got together to sue. They oh, yeah, settled absolutely. it quietly, but yeah, there's a lot of no, that's shady like, sideways practices that work. Yeah. That's no good. I'm just, just Falls it on, that's an easy one to fall under. Not cool. Yeah. Like, we're not, we're not doing that. Yeah. Not doing that, but yeah. Well, I could even see that almost being okay if it was like a known thing. Mm-hmm. Like, when you start working there, like, hey, guys, all the tips go, go towards this. But, like, we're paying you X, so it kind of all evens out. This is just how, like, it's a weird way to do business. But, like, you'd be like, yeah, this is just how we're going to run it. Got to be a front about it, but. But, yeah, to just do that behind everyone's back. Like, oh, yeah, no, your your tips aren't quite what you thought. Yeah, it throws you all off. Yeah. Um, In lighter news, an amazing and happy, happy birthday to the hardest working person. Not man or woman, just person in the barbecue, Miss Tootsie. Of Snows uh, in Lexington, Texas, 89, still hauling shovels and, and rolling smoke. Just just going for it. Yeah. Just not not a sign of slowing down. So I hope I'm just up and walking around at that age. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> much, much less uh, splitting woods, yeah. loading hogs. Like, yeah, <laughs> okay. Maybe that's the key. You just never stop moving and your body won't know that it's hurting. Maybe. 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 <laughs> Shaq figured it out. That's why he's just like, nah, I'm going to just keep doing everything. everything. Just all at once. I'm like, okay, cool. So happy birthday to you, Miss Tootsie. A um, little bit of festival news. We've got uh, Trapador Fest in Aggie Park on May 18th, 2024, uh, this year. So they're going to have a range of different barbecue towns there. You're going to have Hurtado's, Brett's Barbecue Shop, 2M Smokehouse, and a ton more. So snag those tickets while you can. It's right on the back end of uh, Memphis in May, right? It is. It, and boy, oh boy, that's that's coming up. <laughs> There's uh, Getting Piggy With It. That's happening May 18th in Raleigh, North Carolina. So that weekend, obviously, is like Dang, a barbecue a bunch weekend. of stuff going on. Mm-hmm. And that's going to you know feature... Our buddy Logan, he's out there. Oh, nice. Yeah, he's going to be. I hope they take him to Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't, we should drive up and take we him to should. Waffle House. We'll be we'll be right there. Oh, actually, there. yeah, we could just pop over. Yeah, like, hey, you guys want to get some waffle? All right, let's go. Yeah. Uh, but Logan, uh, season two's barbecue showdown runner-up, he will be there. Uh, Leonard of Truce Barbecue, he'll be there. Uh, Shui Wang and Brandon Olson of King's Barbecue, they're the ones that made the absolutely delicious hot pot that I still send people. I've sent so many people like, hey, go to Jack <laughs> Rabbit Philly and then go to King Barbecue. Go get this food. Yeah. Go get these things. Here's over. the run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Order it like this. Uh, but they they are also going to be there. So shout out to them. Uh, seems like a great fest. It's all seems to always fall on Memphis and May weekend. So I, I don't know if and when ever yeah. gonna make it but i want to make it out there one day well so then are all of those just one days so they're um so the aggie park fest is one day may 18th getting piggy with it is two days 18th and the 19th mm-hmm. yeah and also in may our brother matt horn of horn barbecue is putting on a horn barbecue boot camp barbecue boot camp and nice. that is may 10th so sign up and learn from one of the best to do it so why not? So go hang out with Matt and yeah. put your team in for Memphis in May. <laughs> 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 then shoot on over to Texas. It's just a that is a lot. And and I guess let's just run into it. Speaking of Memphis in May, there is mayhem in Memphis at this current I moment. See what you did. Yeah, you see, I, I, I see what you did. Yeah, I'm practicing, man. Got me a little <laughs> thesaurus and whatnot. Um, you've got Memphis in May. Yep. occurring and then you also have the smoke slam fest she but she what's the what's the smoke slam fest are there i'm glad w, you asked is it wwe with barbecue what's happening that would be great actually that would be kind of that'd sick. be kind of <laughs> like get get uh high on the on the on the top rung jump down into a pile of ribs or something <laughs> You just got guys with whole hogs on their shoulder just slamming just, them down. Yeah, there's the no smoker. there's no chair, just getting <laughs> beat over the head with a whole hog. But there it is. But no, uh Smoke Slam is actually the new barbecue festival in town, oddly enough, in Memphis. Even more oddly enough, at the previous Memphis and May um location. I would say that's probably on purpose. 
I'm starting to think that somebody that used to be part of Memphis and May feels got like pissed one of off, right? And I was like, oh, screw you. I'm going to go over here. Oh, okay, Disney, you won't let me make my stuff? I'm going to go start DreamWorks. Yeah. <laughs> and there it is. I really feel like this is exactly what's happening because the line, boy, that line is pretty much split down the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got cats like uh, Big Mo, uh, James Cruz, Chris Lilly and such that are still going to Memphis in May. You've got cats like um, uh, Carrie Bringle, Peg Like Porker, um, Al Fergoni, Misty, the Sal's Butcher's Wife, Eric uh, Blue Smoke Blair, going to, uh, shout out to Poppy of Poppy Smokehouse, going to Smoke Slam. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's a very much um, <laughs> an interesting and apparent blatant, hey, pick a side type of thing. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong, because we were talking about this the other day. Yeah. Isn't there a bigger payout? Oh, yes. Like, let's just Thank talk about. Let's just talk about the money. Yeah, because that's what it is. Always follow the money. Memphis in May. You, there's a total grand prize of a hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which is nothing to sneeze at. That's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Smoke Slam has the highest pork barbecue cash prize mm-hmm. in history. Of a quarter million dollars. Those of you who did not pass third grade math, that is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Wow, that's a lot. Off of some barbecue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, then again, both of those are their total payouts, yeah. so that gets split up. Yeah, yeah. But still, but if you got another hundred thousand dollars sitting in that pool, you're, you're everyone's like, oh, making a little bit more yeah, money. You're, gonna, you're, you're not hurting. Yeah, you're like, yeah. You, Hey, third place never seemed so bad before. You yeah. Know. <laughs> this, I'll be the first place loser. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Forget you, Ricky Bobby. I'm walking home with some fast stacks. <laughs> but that is, uh, I like it. I like it. It's, it's, it breeds not malintent rivalry, but competition. And competition never puts, hurts. Never. And, it, and I think it puts the organizers of Memphis and May on their heels because you're just used to coming in and doing your thing. Mm-hmm. You haven't had to really change, change, or do too much. And you you went through COVID and you came out like, yeah, we're still here. But Smoke Sound was like, no, nah, we're going we're gonna to shift things. It, it, it's it's going to make – Memphis and May is either going to level up, mm-hmm. which they should, or they're going to fall in and be complacent and be like, no, we're going to rest on our name. We're, we're, we're the biggest. We're the X. We're the Z. We're the ones that never show the original winner, um, Bailey Ross, after, you know, being the first black woman to win the first comp, and we never talk about her again. Good luck finding her on their website. That's yeah. what we do. Versus the new kid in town that's diverse, bringing different flavors, mm-hmm. different challenges, all different teams. Old school versus new school, if you if you would. Um, I'm interested to see how it's going to turn out. I think it'll be an interesting weekend. Well, yeah, yeah, it's a long weekend, but it's yeah, a very long weekend. It'll it'll it's be interesting to see how a lot of that stuff plays it's out. It's going to be barbecue everywhere. Um, it's wreaking havoc on bookings <laughs> because the city's now twice as flooded. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested to see if Memphis and May is as busy as it was last year, or do we see an immediate like fall off because everyone's like, oh, let me go check out this new thing. Yeah. Because the tickets are fairly cheap. What is it, like 25 bucks for Memphis and Man? I think it's like 30 or so bucks to get in for general admission mm-hmm. um, at Smoke Slam. So you could be like, oh, this sucks. I'm going to just go over here. It's almost like club hopping. And well, I was about to say, I'd be interested to see how many people are like just going back and forth between both of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're close acts. enough. They legitimately are to walk to one another. Yeah. Uh, hopefully the weather's on your side. But, yeah, yeah it's uh, – I want to check it out. I want to see what's going, what's 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 happening over mm-hmm. there. <laughs> if Petty was a barbecue fest, <laughs> <laughs> we found it. <laughs> we 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 found it. Um, want to give another uh, smoker spotlight? I used to do this on the old channel, but uh, smoker spotlight. We'll drop them every episode. This one and this week's is going out to Pink's Barbecue. They're based out here in Noonan, Georgia, and um, check them out. Check out their site. I haven't had the pleasure of catching up with these guys in person, but I always tell people I'm always watching, 
and they've been steadily oh, yeah. building and going, and they've got their their site together now. They've got a social media management team together now. They've released some some hot sauces and such. Oh, cool! So always always watching. I like I like that aspect. What is it? The, there's stories of like um, Cat Williams and such, just stepping in, catching a few minutes of comedian shows, and leaving them off some money. That's just going to start. Be my thing, like, oh, I like what you're working. I'm gonna just order mm-hmm. 200 bucks of your gift cards and just give them out the yeah. dollars. Like, yeah, keep keep, keep up that keep good doing work. It. Yeah. That's that's that push. It's hard to see everything, but man, when you're doing that, uh, and, and people take notice, I notice those who are working. Yeah, it's always a clear line. You'll, yeah, you'll, you'll 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 see the difference. You'll see the separation happening. So good on those guys. Um, the somber part of the show. Uh, myself and everyone, the whole team, we'd like to wish Pops uh, our deepest condolences on the passing of his father. And I have been speaking with Pops, and he wants me to say thank you to everyone who has reached out. As you guys can imagine, this has been a very tumultuous time for him. And, you know, he's just uh, dealing with it at his own pace, but wanted to put that out there. Sadly, following up, we also pass on our condolences to Chuck, Chuck's flavor train, on the passing of his mother. Mm-hmm. So he's doing well. We're going to catch up with Chuck, but he's, you know, his mother was a huge impact on his life. She'll be dearly missed, never had the opportunity. But from seeing the, the responses of people telling stories, she definitely seemed like an amazing woman. So, you know, um, the clock only goes one way. Yep. You got to live it while you got it and enjoy it. And that's sort of why I wanted to bookend it with this story here. It's never too late, and you're never too old to start your dream. Remember, Ray Kroc didn't get into McDonald's until he was, like, late 40s. Uh, Colonel didn't start business until, I believe, he was 53 or 54. There's a lot of, like, oh, man, I'm, I'm too old. Like, no, Morgan Freeman didn't get his breaks until later in life, and so on and so on. Well, here's another one. Mr. John Toomey has opened up what has just been uh, acclaimed by Texas Monthly, one of the top 25 best new barbecue spots to try, a barbecue restaurant. <laughs> 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 he just opened up the shop at uh, um, J Bar and Q, J M Bar and Q. Um, I want to make sure I got that right. We'll put that in there. But yeah, 95 years old. Dude, that's awesome. Decided to say, I'm I'm a, I'm going to throw my hat in the ring. I'm going to throw my hat in the ring. Yeah, J Bar M Barbecue. That's right. And it's a, it has a beer garden, everything. So I want to check it out. <laughs> I definitely want to check it out because the, the venue looks amazing. And he's done different things. He's been in realty. He's been in entertainment. He's done the restaurant before. But in 95, he just said, I want to get do barbecue. Why not? I don't know why not. Yeah, like, literally. You why can, not? You can you can switch it at any point in time. So for anyone who may feel stuck in a rut or feel like you missed it, you haven't. You are right where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. Yeah. Uh, I've stopped early on in the career and like, oh, I should have just started soon. It's like, no, because if I did, I would have had this experience. I would have had this outlook. I, I, I wouldn't have known what to do with this. Like yeah. the worst thing you can do is get is skip the line, is yeah. skip the process, because then you don't know how to do anything if everything or something crumbles. Yeah. Like you can't go from doing 15 people, you know, dinners at your house to, oh, I want to feed 2,000. I'm like, okay. <laughs> there um, are a few <laughs> things in between. <laughs> a few things in there. Learn, <laughs> learn the process a yeah. bit. And, and Pops and I talk about that a lot uh, uh, as far as just trusting the process and building and learning as you go and just getting incrementally better yeah you don't want to growth spurt it you don't want to go from five eight to six two real quick because you're going to bump in everything yeah you know just go and you'll physically hurt yeah that's gonna <laughs> ah brings back pains yeah that's let's say growing good. pains are a real thing Those shins man like what am i doing up here the air is so different <laughs> <laughs> no man but um i love that story because it's very much like just keep pushing yeah, yeah there's a lot that we've talked about years ago years and years ago and we've started and have done some of those you're like man i remember when this was this now look at what it is Mm -hmm. right so anyone out there it's never too late chase that dream because uh 
you might mess around and end up catching it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and like, I mean, what you literally like, what's the worst that can happen? You're yeah. either going to be at the same spot that you were before you started it, which was that you weren't doing whatever it was, or it ends up working out. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Like I see it. Like I, I don't odd tangent, but I feel like, um, LeBron's always want to get into sports casting. I feel, and you could see him building his exit out of the league now. He's doing his podcast. He's doing these other things. Mm-hmm. He's getting more involved in his tequila brands. Like, yeah, it's the, the it's the sun is setting mm-hmm. in a way just for a new one to rise. Mm-hmm. So if you're feeling like uh, this just isn't it, or I just want to try something, because we've talked with um, uh, during Memphis, I I'll say the phrase and you'll know who I'm talking about. We were in Memphis last year. We had to talk with someone and said maybe you're fanning the wrong flame. Mm-hmm. You really want to do this, but you're actually better at doing this thing. Mm-hmm. You know, that comes naturally and easily to you. Yeah. You're, you're hyperventilating over here about to pass out <laughs> blue in the face. <laughs> but over here, man, it's calm summer breeze, just just knocking it out. So yeah. maybe you're fanning the wrong flame just because you think that's the only way to stay warm. No, just shimmy over here a little bit. Yeah. And, and go that route. I do want to close out with this and ask you, is there a new song that you've discovered that you just like and you're just like, I can't I can't stop. What do the kids say? That's a bop. I That's a bop. <laughs> That's a bop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, hold on. Let me, there was actually one that just came up on my Instagram, but I don't remember the name of it now. Or I, not Instagram, my uh, Spotify. I will go ahead and toss mine out there. Yeah. Uh, I'm loving the music artist uh, Shibuzi. Mm-hmm. Right now, he's got a song called A Bar Song, um, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Tipsy. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's because he's got locks, but I'm digging it. <laughs> yeah. No, so there is um, two artists that I've come across recently. All right. So since you, you said artists, they're not just a song. I'm going to go with two artists. Okay. okay. Um, there is Frank Forrest. It's very lighthearted. Okay. And then uh, the other one that I've really been loving lately is Sam Tompkins. He's from uh, England. It, Okay. Uh, I, do you know the rapping grandpas? Yes. <laughs> I, sh- I think I showed you the joke. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, Joke yeah. is like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Dude, and they're good. Yes. They're not just like, oh, well, they're oh, like this is cute. old and like, yeah, that's better than I thought shirt. it would be. Yeah. No, they're, they're good. good. They're good. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're, they're just they're, good. These boys just don't miss. <laughs> 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 no, man. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a trip. I, uh, I've been getting into it, loving the music, expanding it out because we're hopping all over. I heard it one day. I was like. Everybody in the club is getting tipsy. Right, you you are very right. <laughs> yeah, let's let's go with it. But um, no, we're doing this because we're gonna have to, you know, cultivate a a, a road trip. Let's shout out to uh, barbecue snob, Mister Daniel Vaughn. Hey, brother, I appreciate you listening. Love to have you on. You, you uh, I think you sent a message about because we'd mentioned the tour, mm-hmm. which I still want to do, which because of certain things shifting. May happen in June. Yeah. You know, who knows? Yeah. Funsies. Um, but definitely welcome, welcome the Olive Branch and the offer because uh, we'd love to do a full tour out there. It's going to be so much gas. <laughs> 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 so much driving. Um, and the gas is not getting any cheaper. No, I was in, um, <laughs> well, I just got back from LA and I had to fill up the rental. I was looking at it like that. That can be right. Excuse me. I was like, since when do, do the pumps tell time? Like, what is this? What, yeah. you, what am I? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you pin, you click it back just to reset it, like making sure it's yeah. okay. I'm like, yeah. yeah, this is this isn't great. This no. is not a it's not a good way to be, man. But no matter how uh, high these gas prices get, I'm still not buying a cyber truck. <laughs> not yet. I, I mean, if I was going to get an electric truck, it would just be a Rivian. Yeah. I like those a lot. But yeah. also then there's the debate with, you know, Ford having theirs now. It's like, well, you've got a Ford. Yeah. And you know that they've sorted that out. You know, it did take them a little bit longer than everyone else, but you know that that thing is it's bulletproof. It's going to work. Yeah. It's going to work. There's something to be said about having a brand that's recognizable that just is built on reliability. Yeah. So what are you going to do? I don't know. What you can do is like, subscribe, share, tell two friends to tell another friend and uh, let us know how we're doing on the pod. What do you want to hear? What do you want to see? Some more behind the scenes stuff. Do you want some more guests? Because we've got some really cool ones coming up and Mm -hmm. I can't wait for them to get on. Uh, One is currently caravanning to the North Dakotas right now. It's like, yeah, good luck. Have fun with that. Um, (laughs) But there's a lot of 
fun and interesting stuff coming up. We can't wait to share with you guys, and I appreciate you guys listening to This Week in Barbecue. I have been your host, Rashid Phillips, and as always, the magnificently bearded Mr. Lee Garman. See you guys next time. Protein shake. I'm about to start doing that myself now, too. (laughs)